Our presidency in the coming months of the UN Security Council is strategically of the greatest importance. I understand that there will be discussion in Sudan under our presidency at the Security Council. I think we ought to be encouraging robust action. Uh, my present here is to, to let you be aware that the, the situation in the country, we are going to have the referendum supposed to happen on the, on the 9th of January uh, 2011, but we have fears that uh, a, a lot of things, uh, preparation has not yet been done, registration of the people have not been done, the board of democations has not been done, and there is no preparation at the moment for how to welcome, how to receive those influx of refugees which are going to come either from the north or different parts of the Sudan back to the southern Sudan. The government of southern Sudan at the moment, they have no capacity uh, really to, to uh, administer or to welcome this people in terms of humanitarian uh, situation. We are afraid the violence in the southern Sudan also may increase because we have an LRA in, in Western Equatoria and, and that also it can cause uh, disruptions in the, in the life of the people in the, in the southern Sudan. Already it has caused uh, refer. people are now displaced in most of the places in Western Equatoria and that is a very big concern. Asking the international community and the NGOs really to pay focus attention to the people of Sudan so that they should not be allowed to, to, to take the country back to war. We are asking the government of UK, the government of the United uh, States of America, and the UN, and Norway, those who have actually, who part of the strikers who have signed a peace agreement to come back to these people so that they should not be allowed to happen because if it is allowed the world will be sorry tomorrow because uh, it is because at the moment you could see the way they've placed it up soldiers in the border between the north and the south is very very fearful because they are almost f uh, five miles from each other Every soldier could do anything and then would pack the war. So if the people are not really to, to support these people, not to allow the, the, the war to come back. So my present here is to appeal to the international community and uh, all the NGOs in the world really to support the people of Sudan, not to allow them uh, to go back to war. That is the message I want to make to my country. The referendum is due at the beginning of next year. A great many of those things which should have been done in preparation for the referendum have not been done. All the questions are unresolved. The question of how the referendum is to be implemented in the border area of Abia, as Archbishop Daddy has said, is unresolved and getting more serious by the day. And the situation of southern refugees in northern Sudan, and there may be up to four million of them, is a matter of real concern because if there is vote for separation next year, their status in the North will be even more vulnerable than it is at the moment. The threat of open war, of course, in and after the referendum period is the most serious thing of all, and that signals a return to what has been decades of slaughter and poverty and utter instability in a very large, very vulnerable country, which also has a The UK government has a good record of involvement in Sudan, and I think that's been recognised. I think even during this year, pressure has come from HMG in a helpful way. Now that we have the presidency of the Security Council next month, it seems there's a very good opportunity for Britain to show some leadership, and I believe that that is very much in view. Um, I would like to see, and I'm very confident we shall see, our government stepping up to the plate on this and keeping up the pressure on the international community to do the kind of monitoring that is needed in Sudan to apply the pressure 